Hey, what's up everyone? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and I have a highly anticipated episode for you guys today, at least for me personally. When I heard about this mini PC and the specs that it would contain in the announcement, I was very excited. And I think this mini PC might just be the home lab server of 2024, at least among the hardware that we know about in early 2024. I have the Minis Forum MS01 mini PC for you guys today, and I'm going to step through what I think are the great points about this unit for a home lab and why it may not be perfect for everyone. So stick around and let's dive into this really awesome mini PC. So let's dive right into the specs of the Minis Forum MS01. The Minis Forum MS01 has some very impressive hardware. You have the option between the Intel Core i9-13900H processor or the Core i9-12900H processor. At the bottom end of the spectrum, you've got the Core i5-12450H processor. One of the things I like about this package is that you can actually order it as a bare bones unit. You can also add 32 gigs of memory with a one terabyte SSD from Minis Forum. Now, what other specs do we have with this unit? Well, we've already went over the Intel 13th Gen Core i9 CPUs. You also have the onboard X710 10 gigabit SFP Plus Ethernet ports, along with two additional Intel 2.5 gig ports on board, as well as three NVMe slots, along with a standard PCIe expansion slot, which that is PCIe 4.0. And then finally, we've got dual USB 40 gig and 20 gig Thunderbolt Ethernet port. So this thing has powerful specifications, lots of great hardware, along with the fact that you can also manage this with the Intel V Pro management solution from Intel. Okay, so the MS01. Here it is, and it is a beauty. I really like the fit and finish of the uh, housing of the MS-01. On the front, you've got a lot of the expected here, and I, I don't think this is the exciting end of this uh, unit, but we'll go, go through this. We've got, of course, the, the power button. We've got the headphone jack. We've got the USB 3.x adapter, and we've got two USB-A standard ports here, and that is about it. On the housing, we can see we've got lots of venting in the housing uh, that makes for nice airflow throughout the unit. Also, I want to uh, point out on the top of the unit, we've got some nice ventilation in the top. It allows for a lot of the heat dissipation, just helps to keep the air moving throughout the unit. And when you have uh, 10 gig networking, you've got possibility of an expansion card. You've got the i9 processor. You're going to need that heat dissipation to be fairly efficient with this mini PC. Now on to the business end of this unit, which I think is the most exciting. We've got two 2.5 two gig network adapters. Again, the Intel network adapter here, 2.5 gig. And we've also got two 10 gig SFP Plus ports uh, that are also Intel based. All of this networking is compatible inside of ESXi, Proxmox, all of the Linux variants of hypervisors that you can think of. So great networking features that we have here available to us. Uh, we've also got the HDMI port. We've got two USB 3.x ports, and then we've also got the barrel jack for the power brick, which is a fairly good size for the power brick. On my blog post review of this unit, you can see I put pictures comparing the power brick next to the MS-01 itself. So you guys can see inside, we've got a fairly large surface area, open area here, and that is for the expansion slot. As you guys can see here, we've got a PCI E 4.0 expansion slot that you can fit a number of cards in. Now, I know Serve the Home did a really nice review and they tested out a lot of the video cards and add-in cards that are able to fit inside of this chassis. And then there were some that they found that are not a good fit for this form factor. And there are just some other things about the inside that make it less than ideal or less than easy to fit some of these adding cards uh, in there. 
You've got the uh, fan with the uh, three screws here you have to remove to take this out and then that gives you access to the memory that is underneath uh, this fan. So taking that out, moving that aside, you get access to the system memory. Now on the bottom side of the unit, if you remove this fan, you have access to the uh, three NVMe slots. As you guys can see, I have removed the fan and I'm kind of holding this to the side and you can, I wanted you guys to see the internals here. We've got, I have two NVMe drives currently installed and then with the capability of having the three NVMe drives. However, one of the uh, definitely talked about features, if you want to call it that, of this unit, it actually has a physical switch that you must have in the right position if you insert the U.2 drive. Now, that's not a big deal if you have the U.2 drive inserted. However, if this switch is flipped to the wrong position with the NVMe drive in the slot that is also doubles as the U.2 slot for that expansion card, you will physically damage your NVMe hard drive, aka fry the NVMe drive if you had this selected as it throws more voltage due to the, the specifications of the U.2 compared to an NVMe drive. All in all though, this is an impressive piece of hardware. I think for this form factor, all of the capabilities that it gives for those of us that are looking for high-speed connectivity, storage options, and expansion card options for the home labs. One of the first things that I wanna show you guys is the BIOS of the MS-01. It has a wizard-like interface, but I wanna show you a couple of features and a couple of BIOS settings that you want to take note of as well as how you can enable or disable those efficient cores in the MS-01 BIOS. When I initially created my USB ISO configuration, I realized I needed to go in and turn off Secure Boot. Here on this screen that I'm showing and sharing with you guys, you can see that I can make those changes but initially I was unable to. Now, I found a Reddit thread with a couple of users that had the same issue and luckily one of the users had mentioned they had went in and set the admin password and the user password. Once they did that, they were able to go into Secure Boot and make changes. Under the advanced CPU configuration, you can go in here and set the active performance cores as well as the active efficient core. So this dropdown basically allows you to select all or a specific number of those cores and the same for the efficient core. So you can select a specific number or just leave them set at all. Now, if you set zero for efficient cores, you in essence are disabling those efficient cores. Now with VMware vSphere installed as a test hypervisor on this MS-01 platform, I want to boot into the ESXi hypervisor and show you guys some of the characteristics and specifications according to ESXi when you either have those e-cores enabled or you have those disabled. So first off, let's look and see what it looks like in ESXi when we've got all of the cores enabled. Okay, so I have all of the cores enabled on the MS-01 and I wanted to show you guys what it looks like in the status screen or the overview screen of the host. First from the host client and then we'll look at the vSphere client. As you can see, I've got the noted 14 CPUs times 13 Gen i9-13900H. What's interesting, when you enable the kernel parameter to allow an ESXi host to boot with a hybrid processor, it recognizes that you have hyperthreading, yes, but the hyperthreading is effectively disabled. The additional benefit of hyperthreading, you lose that when you add the kernel parameter to allow it to boot with the hybrid processor configuration. I wanted to show you guys the available CPU headroom that we display inside of ESXi and the host client. It says we have 41.8 gigahertz that are available to us. So this is effectively the eight CPUs of the efficient cores and the six CPUs of the performance cores. So now let's disable the efficient cores and let's go back and reboot the host 
and see what it looks like inside of ESXi with those disabled. Okay, so now I've rebooted, I have disabled the efficient cores, and I wanted to show you guys what that looks like inside of the host client. If we look at the hardware now, we only see six CPUs, but now if we expand that CPU hardware information, we can look and see the logical processors are showing as 12, so double the cores per socket. And now if we look at hyper-threading, we see yes, that it's available, and also that it is enabled. So what that tells us is when we disable the efficient cores, we can then start benefiting from hyper-threading on the performance cores. Now, I know what you guys are wondering, how does this perform when you have the efficient cores disabled and you're benefiting from hyper-threading compared to if you have all of the cores enabled? Now, as a disclaimer, I have not done any side-by-side -side comparisons of those configurations from a performance perspective. That would be an interesting experiment to do, and I may consider doing that uh, for a future blog post or video. Hopefully this helps you guys to see what those CPU configurations look like when you enable or disable those efficient cores. Well guys, there you have it, the new Minis Forum MS-01 as a mini server for the home lab. I think this is one to definitely take note of. If you're looking to pull the trigger on a very capable mini PC that allows you to run a lot of enterprise type workloads, uh, has the hardware to do that with fast networking, uh, two 10 gig ethernet ports with two two and a half gig ethernet ports. That is just something we've not seen on many PCs, especially in this form factor and the ability to have the add-in card. I think that just puts the icing on the cake. Now, let me describe what I think would be the wonderful, nice to have things with the MS-02 in Mini's Forum. If you're listening and you want to target the home lab enthusiast market with this type of hardware, I think it would be excellent to have or entertain having a MS-02 that would be outfitted with something more like a workstation class processor. Maybe a Xeon processor could be fit into the MS-02 when it arrives. I think one of the other things that I would love to see uh, that is so limiting with the mini PC form factor is the amount of memory. If the MS-02 or something like it could have standard DDR5 memory slots with ECC memory along with that Xeon processor, if I could have the pie in the sky request, that would just be fantastic. To put something like 256 gigs of memory in this form factor even more along with a Xeon processor with the 10 gig networking, the NVMe slots, I think that would be a killer home lab server. Let me know what you think about the Minis Forum MS-01. Is this a home mini server that you are thinking about purchasing? Let me know in the comments to this video. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys on the next video.